Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. My channel recently crossed the 400,000 subscriber mark, and for that, I'm eternally grateful to each and every one of you uh, who watches this channel. Thank you very much. But in the early days of my channel, in the early days of my channel, I remember one of the most controversial videos I ever put up. Uh, I had put up a video about Walmart and how they check your receipt as you walk out the door. And I had people asking me, do they have the right to do that? And I said, well, you know, interestingly enough, Walmart's a private entity. And you know they're going to do that when you go in. So if you don't want them to do that, don't shop there. And I had people getting irate saying, I have the right to shop there. And they have no right to ask for my receipt. And so people are telling me all kinds of crazy stuff they do, like jamming the crumpled receipt down into their pants, going, well, if you want to see it, go get it, and things like that. And I also had people claiming that they threatened the uh, receipt checker with violence and so on. And, and again, if you don't like their policies, don't shop there. And I actually had several people go, Steve, you know, the fact that you shop there means you're a sheep. And I'm like, I don't shop there. I don't, I don't shop at Walmart. I just don't. And I had several people also say, but Steve, if this is the only game in town and you've got to shop there, then what? Well, again, they've got this policy, and you know that going in, okay? And so here's the deal. I had several people send me a story that came down recently from businessinsider.com, and it's right on point. And so Walmart has been found not liable after detaining a customer who refused to show receipts at the door. And it happened more than once, apparently, with this customer, according to the story. And so I mentioned that many states have got a concept of shopkeeper privilege, that a shopkeeper who has reason to believe that you've shoplifted can actually detain you so that the police can come and they can then say this person shoplifted. We think they shoplifted. I've had people claim all kinds of things that would happen if that you know if they tried to do that to me. But the point is, the law is on the books. So they have the right to do a little bit more than the average person because of the fact that they are a shopkeeper. And so that plays into this story. Gloria Dawson wrote it. A customer repeatedly refused to show his receipt, first purchases at a Denver area Walmart. And he actually did it at several Denver area Walmarts. And he sued them when they detained him because they said, well, we think you might be shoplifting. So Colorado's second highest court affirmed last week that Walmart cannot be held liable for false imprisonment of the shopper. And this has been widely reported there as well. While shoppers are not legally required to show receipts, a customer's refusal to show the receipt could give the store probable cause to detain them. Previous cases have also determined this, so the court was simply following precedent. While asking customers for receipts is commonplace at big box stores like Walmart and Costco and Best Buy, uh, it has also caused tension among some shoppers and employees. So Walmart spokesperson said in response to Insider's request for comment, we believe our associates acted appropriately and we will continue to defend the company in this litigation. Uh, insider attempted to contact the man but could not get a comment from him. In the Colorado case, the man sought to create circumstances which would result in Walmart employees reasonably believing he was committing a crime in their presence, wrote the judge at the Court of Appeals in the opinion. The Colorado Court of Appeals maintained the decision of a Colorado County judge who ruled in favor of Walmart last year and it was five lawsuits. This guy got detained five times, and he sued them five times. And it, it looks like he may have been trying to do this on purpose. And I've seen videos on the internet where people go out and do stuff, and they film it, and they often say they're trying to prove a point. And so I've seen video of people going into Walmart. I don't know if I've seen this guy or not. People going into Walmart and doing the stuff and then getting in arguments with the people at the door. And so in this case, the guy filed five lawsuits against Walmart for being detained apparently five times. And they put the cases together and said, no, it's not how it works. The judges of both courts said that he visited the stores intending to sue as part of a sting operation. 
He also called the trips a sting in statements to store employees. And when officers responded, he apparently used that word as well. He would buy things from the store. He would decline a bag. And he said he was doing that for environmental reasons. And then he would attempt to walk out of the store without a visible receipt, according to the judge. If he was stopped and asked for a receipt, he refused to provide it until after he was detained or, in some cases, arrested. So once he gets arrested, he goes, okay, fine, here's a receipt. Which he could have shown them as he was walking towards the door. In each case, he entered a Walmart store with the intent to, and then actually acted, in a manner intended to provoke the Walmart employees into believing he was concealing property of the store. And that is the appellate court quoting the lower court's findings. Uh, In the lower court opinion, it was mentioned the shopkeeper privilege, a provision in Colorado law, and many states have got it, that protect stores and employees from liability if they have reasonable grounds to detain and question people they suspect of shoplifting. Now, they cannot obviously escalate things much beyond detaining somebody. And the law will often say they've got to be able to do that without a breach of the peace. Okay? But simply detaining somebody and calling the police is something they're allowed to do. So, in his opinion, the appellate court quoted the lower court, noting that the man was not confined because he knew he could escape without causing an unreasonable risk of harm to himself by merely presenting his receipt to Walmart employees. So the way this opinion is and the way the facts are stated in the cases, the case went down exactly as you think it did. Guy goes into the store and he buys things. He then is carrying them loose out of the store with no visible receipt. When they ask him to show a receipt, he doesn't. And then they say, okay, well, you can't leave. So they hold him. They take him back probably into a a holding room, a a, a room back office type of room. They call the police. The police show up. And when the police arrest him, he then goes, boom, there's your receipt. And this court is saying that he's not being confined against his will because any time he wanted to, he could have shown the receipt. And so since he didn't show the receipt when he could have, whose fault is that? (laughs) And so I understand how many people find it intrusive that they ask you to show the receipt. And also many people feel like, hey, it it feels like they're accusing me of a crime. It makes me feel bad. And yet there's a line of people who are all showing the receipt. So I guess everybody feels bad equally, or everybody is being accused of a crime equally. But again, unless this is your first time shopping at Walmart, this should not come as a big surprise. And so I don't know the real particulars of all five of this guy's incidents. But they say in the opinion of the court, one of the opinions, that he referred to it as a sting. He was trying to set this up so that he could file the lawsuit and then filed five lawsuits resulting apparently from five different interactions at Walmart in that state. And again, court says, well, all you had to do was show the receipt. They say the showing of the receipt is part of loss prevention, right? They're trying to prevent the losses from happening. Well, I've also get a lot of people in response to my videos and say, Steve, you understand that most most inventory shrinkage comes from within the store, right? It's actually their own employees. So? Some people do shoplift. and You can't say, well, other people shoplift, so I get to. (laughs) Not how it works. They can take steps to prevent inventory shrinkage. And so if one way to fight the shrink is to ask for receipts on the way out the door, they can do that. And, you know, again, I know a lot of people who are going to get bent out of shape, as my dad used to say, over this story and say, I shouldn't have to show a receipt at any store I go into. If that's how you feel, don't shop there. And and if you go with Steve, it's the only game in town. Well, 
that might be true for some people. If you literally live a mile from a Walmart and the nearest other store is 100 miles away, but I think the vast majority of us live within driving distance of several different stores. And I've mentioned before, um, I used to live in a place five years ago where there was a Dollar General uh, three blocks from where I lived, a Dollar General. And I hated that place. I hated that place. And I, I'll admit, I shopped there once or twice like in emergencies. I needed something fast. And there was a Meyer store, which is a big chain in the Midwest, Meyer, and they're based in Michigan. And there was a Meyer about 20 miles away. I would drive to the Meyer. I went to Meyer once a week and I stocked up on everything I needed. And I managed to only go to that dollar store, I think two or three times in the entire time I lived there because I just didn't like it. And so is it, is it possible that somebody who is on very, very limited means would say, well, gee, I've got to go to that dollar store because it's right there. I can't afford to drive to the Meyer 20 miles away. I, I don't I don't know. I don't know. But I guess the question is, how big of an issue is this for you? Because what you want to do here is not one of the choices. You can shop there and show your receipt or shop there, not show your receipt and suffer the consequences, understanding that what they're doing is not illegal. They're allowed to do it. So, uh, you know, could they change their methods and their practices? Yeah, they probably could. But do they have to? No, they don't have to. And so you can shop at Walmart and they can ask to see your receipt. And depending on the receipt checker that day, if you refuse or roll it up and jam it in your pants and say, come and get it, well, you know, you might get detained. And guess what? At least in Colorado right now, it appears that they're allowed to do that as long as they can do it without a breach of the peace. Now you might say, but Steve, what if I breach the peace? <laughs> what do they say about, you know, play games, win prizes? Well, you might see what happens because here's the guy who filed five, five lawsuits over five separate incidences and he went 0 for 5 on those. So there you go. John John, Gregor, and Ashen all sent that to me. Thank you very much. From businessinsider.com and Gloria Dawson, Walmart found not liable after detaining a customer who refused to show receipts at the door. Five separate occasions, five separate lawsuits, all of them dismissed. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. How many times have you said this to yourself? Never buy a car you can't push.